Now that the idea of the body as a primary altar has been established, more especially the fact that you're already using it, we can move on to secondary altars, or go back to them rather. Think about this for a moment. The body is apparently one thing, as in it appears to be one thing. Yet and still, it has almost an infinite number of divisions and categories of such. Limbs and extremities, tissues and organ systems, aspects of that larger whole that makes sure that not only does the larger aspect function, but helps it to do so. A pantheon of deities is constructed in the same manner, or rather, in the same image. The most essential and refined aspects being at the center or top, and the rest coming down and out or orbiting that center. In terms of a left-hand path occultist, more especially one who is practicing self-deification, this understanding is very beneficial. Secondary altars specify different aspects of that larger idea and help to give it definition. The altars and shrines of old, kept in the most sacred of places, would both venerate and express a physical form for the primary aspects of their pantheon. The secondary altars around that or even in the homes of the people, would end up exemplifying this or that specific part of the whole. Whichever part the practitioner wanted to amplify in their own psyche and physical life would be associated with the altars that they would keep. Some people and communities set up altars in their homes for their homes. Some set up altars at their place of business, and there are even those who set up altars in their gardens or within their workspace. The power of these things is not within the objects themselves, nor anything you place on top of some surface or hang on a wall. This is the exact same line of thinking that you have with your body in the physical world. What it is that you are is not within the body and its flesh. The flesh is manifest in its image. At the very least, you just decorate the flesh based on however you've agreed to construe and frame your personality. This same thing goes for an altar. As I said, the power is not in the altar and what you put there physically, but the connection it has in your psyche to its placement in the world. For example, a stop sign on the street corner. It sits there and does not move on its own. On one level of analysis, it is essentially sheet metal and paint. Nonetheless, most all cars stop before it and those walking the streets depend on that to make the passage of their journey safe. The cars do not stop because they are forced to or because of what the sign is made from. They stop because of the agreements they have made to the reality that they are living. That being said, you can consider the roadways we traverse from day to day to be an altar to travel itself, adorned in the signs and symbols of the minor deities of that pantheon. That stop sign being part of the symbolism as a minor deity within that pantheon. Traffic lights, expressways, all manner of various street signs and crosswalks. There are bridges, overpasses, there are even dirt roads, all of which are adorned with various symbolism to communicate with those that traverse upon them. Each representing the physical form of some agreement that we've already established with ourselves within our psyches. Now let me be clear. I'm not telling you to go run a bunch of stop signs and get yourself a ticket and go to jail or something. What I am saying is that the degree to which sheet metal and paint can have car after car after car stop in front of it is based more on the agreement than the substance of the thing that is there. It speaks to the idea of what it is that you can affect with the agreements that you make, and also the manner in which you shape those agreements. With the knowledge of the primary altar to self as the body and some of the history as to how people have constructed secondary altars for themselves, you are in possession of a wealth of ideas as to how you can approach this work. It's not simple as saying that there are no rules, even though on the deepest level of analysis that's true. Look, this is more what I mean. The point is more so that the rules that you do make and have been making are what will hold true. The question is, how true are you to the rules that you say you make? Even further, are you aware of all of the rules that you've been making and whether or not you necessarily need to do them? 
Even after Neo watched Morpheus jump across a gap between buildings, and even affirmed himself that he could do it too, when the integrity of his belief was put to the test, the truth was that he did not in fact believe. There are altars that we all make common usage of. Kitchens, bedrooms, marketplaces and grocery stores, civic buildings and public entertainment centers. So then, for the left-hand path occultist, is an altar necessary? I would say it's as necessary as that physical body you've been using as a vessel. We have already immersed ourselves in various symbols and altars throughout our physical lives. How you choose to frame your reality is the only thing that's an obstacle to seeing this truth. Let your altars stand as testament to what it is you say you believe and know. But also, be sure to keep an eye out for the altars that you've already been making yourself. And remember, it's not what you think, it's how you think.